FutureLux CES 2012 coverage is brought to you by Cooler Master. Celebrating 20 years of innovation and excellence with visually striking products like the new Cooler Master Cosmos 2 Ultra Tower Chassis. Hi, I'm Stephen with FutureLooks.com and we're at CES 2012. We're over at Gigabyte checking out some new things. Uh, but one thing that we wanted to actually address was the X79 thing, which is, of course, that BIOS thing that people have been kind of blowing out of proportions. I've got Colin Bricks over here. He's one of the marketing gurus at the company and he's going to clarify just a little bit more about what this is all about and how it affects you. What, so what, how does this affect the customer? Well, basically, um, it doesn't really affect them that much. Um, what happened was somebody intentionally damaged our motherboard. Obviously, when you're overclocking, um, temperature is an issue. Um, you need to have adequate cooling. Um, and they intentionally did something to damage our boards to give us negative publicity, basically. Um, so what we did is in, ta in Taiwan, we issued a Taiwanese release because it was in, the, um, in, in Asia that it happened. Um, and uh, some Journalists from other websites had, had said that there was a, a recall from Gigabyte. Um, but this was just Google translated. It was a mistake. It was actually, um, we had a BIOS update. So we updated our BIOS to F7 version. Um, basically, we disabled the ability to, to intentionally damage the boards. Um, so we added this feature in F7, and some people, um, there was some other misinformation out there saying that this affects overclocking. Um, but right after F7, our resident overclocker, High Cookie, um, used our lower end UD3 board and actually broke a whole bunch of world records. We sent out a press release for that. And then last week, he was in China as well with the China event, and he broke those records again using the same board. So performance isn't affected. All you have to do, go to the Gigabyte website, update to F7 BIOS or, or later, and you'll be fine. So basically, in a nutshell, it's just a BIOS update that basically fixes just a local itch on there. Uh, as long as you're using proper cooling methods and everything and you're overclocking, it is totally a non-issue. Yeah, so no, there's no hardware change, there's no board recall. All you have to do is update your BIOS. And basically a Google Translate fail. <laughs> Google fail. But on to brighter and better things. We've actually got a quick look at the new 7 series board that's coming out from Intel. Colin's gonna step us through just a couple things that he can say about this new platform, so stay tuned. Now, as we were alluding to, there's actually a new 7 series board coming out from Intel. You know, there's still some details that are a bit hush-hush, people aren't willing to talk about quite yet, but Colin has decided, hey, you know what, let's, let's talk about it as much as we can. Uh, Gigabyte's got a whole line of boards, um, starting with this guy here, what's this all about? So just in general about the platform, it's Intel's next uh, generation processors supporting their 7 series. Um, we're very excited about this launch. Um, we definitely feel that the performance and features will make people want to upgrade from their 6 series or even if they have an older board. Um, we've got a full range of motherboards and I, I think I'll just start off with this guy right here. Um, last year at CES we launched our first gaming motherboards and we're proud to be able to continue the, the lineup for our gaming series. And this is our G1 Sniper 3. This is based off of the new chipset that is upcoming. Um, this is a full-size ATX. Um, we've done a lot of features for gamers on board. Um, we still have uh, Creative on board audio, but we're using their new uh, Soundcore 3D uh, audio processor. Uh, we're also using, this is the world's first motherboard that has uh, Bigfoot networks who were bought by Qualcomm uh, Athros and they have a new chip called the E2201 um, and we're using that. And we also have dual LAN and we have an Intel NIC on board as well. So four way, a um, lot of overclocking features on these boards as well so uh, we're very excited about this. And again, this is an early sample from Taiwan so I actually had to steal these from the engineers. So the heat sink design is not final um, and some of the features may change but uh, you get an idea of what, what to expect. So the guns and the missiles will come in a later revision? Possibly. <laughs> well, what, let's take us down to this one. This looks like a very interesting uh, MATX version of the sniper. 
Yeah, that's exactly what it is. A lot of people have been asking us for, you know, when are you going to have a smaller form factor gaming motherboard? And we definitely deliver with this guy. This is our G1 Sniper M3 motherboard. Um, we have a lot of, you know, gaming features on board. We still got creative. We're still using the high-end capacitors, but we shrunk it down into a much smaller form factor. So it's definitely a lot more LAN party friendly for a lot of the small form factor systems, right? Exactly. So people can actually take this out of their house and, and, and go to events and stuff. Perfect. Now, you've also still taken care of all the mainstream users with a, a few more boards down here, right? Yeah, so we still have our full range of uh, motherboards like we normally do, our segmenting. Um, so after our high-end gaming, we're going to have our UD5 motherboard uh, and also our UD3. And there'll be maybe a couple of other boards in between that as well. Um, but for the UD5, you know, we've kept... Uh, a couple of things throughout the entire platform. So even on the UD3 we'll have, we've got all the overclocking features. So we've got a debug card, power, uh, clear CMOS reset, uh, voltage read points, and that's on all of our 7 Series boards. Um, we're also including a PCI uh, uh, MSATA slot. So you can actually add an MSATA, so you can do some caching, so Intel Smart Response. Um, and also, we're, we have a power over PCI Express to, to feed the graphics um, using a, a, a normal uh, connector here. And we have that on all of our, our full range of boards. Perfect. Now, I guess there's one more thing over here. One more thing. Um, another focus for this platform is going to be uh, uh, for small business applications and we're really uh, going to be heavily promoting our small business motherboards um, before it was a little difficult to to market because you you know as a motherboard manufacturer how do you uh, package a board and sell a service at the same time well Intel has done a lot of really great things uh, uh, on their um, sort of business orientated motherboards that allows people small businesses to manage their PCs from their home, from wherever, you know, one to six PCs. Um, you can control a lot of different functions of the PC. You can, you know, turn them on when your employees get in the office and turn them off when they leave. And so it's really an important platform for us. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, motherboards from us coming out for this, for small businesses. So it looks like the 7 Series is actually a, you know, it's not crippled in any way, it's not the, the little brother, it actually has a lot of features to give mainstream users all the way across the board from gamers all the way to your business user, right? Yeah, definitely, and you know, uh, performance wise, you know, obviously I can't mention anything specifically, but we've been testing for the past month, or two months, or three, and um, we're really happy with the feature set and performance. Our resident overclocker, High Cookie, he's uh, got some LN2 tanks where he's been putting these boards through the paces already. So we're excited and we think our customers are going to be excited too. Now, has Intel actually told you when you can release these boards? Um, so the guidance right now is going to be early Q2. Uh, so we should see that early Q2 sometime. Fantastic, Connell. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we are at the Gigabyte booth at CES 2012. Uh, hopefully there's a few more things that we're going to check out here to share with you. Now we just finished up with Colin Bricks. He talked about some of the new 7 Series motherboards and a little bit of you know that issue with the X79, which is actually a non-issue. But now we did promise that we're going to go through some other things at the Gigabyte booth, and we found this. This is their new 7970 series, the HD 7970. Uh, it's based on the AMD Radeon chipset. This is using one of their WinForce 3 uh, coolers which has three fans which pushes air away from the center of the chipset so that it keeps it nice and cool. Uh, this is a PCI 3.0 uh, compliant card so if you get one of the new PCI 3.0 compliant motherboards you should be able to take advantage of all the graphics processing power of this GPU. Now I'm not sure about pricing and availability but I believe that it's going to be available right after CES sometime. Uh, we'll probably see the announcement for that really soon. So that's the last thing from the Gigabyte booth at CES 2012. I'm Steven with futurelooks.com. Do stay tuned for more coverage on youtube.com slash futurelooks.com, but also check out our Twitter and our Facebook. We're posting pics there every single day live from the show. Take care, everyone.